All right, everyone, we start off today with a great foible of the GOP with regards to their debate loyalty pledge. Of course, if you're in the Republican race, you can only take part in the party-sponsored debates if you've signed this pledge. So far, it's already off the charts weird. The fact that they instituted a loyalty pledge was clearly a swipe at Trump. He's saying he won't sign it, which means that you know, they either have, they're playing a game of chicken, they either don't have Trump on the debate stage, which I think some of the other candidates actually would prefer, um, or, or, he, or they end up backing down. They say, okay, 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 it's clear that the loyalty pledge was, was a bad idea. Our constituents complain. They'll blame it on the constituents, of course. And so we've decided in, in the will of the people is that we remove it or something like that. It's possible to do that. Trump still may or may not show up to the debate. <clears throat> I think the wisest thing for him to do, regardless, is to do a competing event. It can be a rally, you know, live stream on Rumble, etc., YouTube. Uh, it could be his return to X. He could simply fly into a rage during the debate and live tweet about it. Even if he's just posting on Truth Social, people will take it up and run with it. It'll go trending. And so he'll end up getting more attention than the actual debate itself, potentially. I mean, if he's saying spicy shit, people have a tendency to latch on to that. Nobody really wants to see Mike Pence ramble about uh, the border for the fifth time and how it's not his concern. Although it is meme-worthy. <laughs> it's basically a lol cow. Anyway, I like this article. And I'd like to read some of it verbatim, because it is eye-opening. Congrats to Byron York, one of the last people apparently capable of crafting a legacy media opinion piece and, uh, and saying something that's actually noteworthy, something that's actually intelligent. So uh, we'll go through some of this verbatim. Then there was the final requirement. To be eligible to take part in the debate, having met all the above standards, so you have to have a certain number of donors, a certain amount of polling, uh, in, in variable polls. And it's only the polls that the GOP Uniparty will accept, and so there's a little bit of fiddlesticks there, too. Uh, a candidate must also sign a pledge agreeing to support the eventual party nominee, which will be Trump, which is why several people are refusing to sign it. It's not just Trump. Uh, is that It is that requirement that threatens to blow up the debate process, and the candidate who can blow it up is, no surprise, former President Donald Trump. In a new interview with Newsmax, Trump said he will not sign the RNC pledge because there are multiple Republican candidates he will never support for president. I wouldn't sign the pledge, Trump told interviewer Eric Bolling. Why would I sign a pledge? There are people on there that I wouldn't have. They wouldn't want you to sign a pledge, but I can name three or four people that I wouldn't support for president. So right there, there's a problem. And others have raised the same alarm. Chris Christie is saying, well, I'll sign the pledge, but I won't mean it. Basically doing what, what Trump did, I think, in 2016. Uh, which is, you know, it shows Christie for who he is. He knows he won't be the nominee. Everyone under the sun knows it, including Chris Christie's own supporters. Uh, his refusal to abide by that pledge means he expects Trump to be the winner. Chris Christie has pretty much burned that bridge. If it were DeSantis, I think Christie would have no problem with it. In fact, I think he'd be trying to suck DeSantis' cock in order to get a cabinet position. He'd do anything that he could to wiggle his way in their sleazebag style because he's no longer got an elected political career uh, to go with. So, you know, you got to do something with your life. When you're, when you're the big man in Joyzy, uh, you, you don't want to let that go. End up with the mafia breaking your kneecaps, I suppose. Maybe he's a mafia puppet. It is Chris Christie we're talking about, so who knows? Uh, Nikki Haley signed the pledge, but then she crossed out Biden's name. It's basically, uh, I, I pledge to support the Republican candidate to defeat Joe Biden. She crossed that out and put Kamala in there because she thinks that Biden's going to croak or be 25th or something like that. It's possible. She may, in the end, uh, turn out to be prescient. That's the only thing, the only accomplishment for Nikki Haley's career other than warmongering. Um, I am Team Trump, as I've told people. I am not a Republican. I am not a conservative, mainly because I like winning. And Republicans and conservatives are not great at winning things. Though, sure, there are some victories lately. Look at the Bruin decision. Who was the one who paved the way for Bruin? Oh, that was Donald Trump. He is not a hyper-conservative individual. The DeSantis simps actually are right when they uh, levy that criticism. No, he's not like Grandpappy's uh, Republicans. He's not like a Bush uh, Republican. He's not a conservative. He likes to win. Exactly my point. There's a reason that I can support him. Uh, Mitt Romney has more moralistic conservative values than Donald Trump. I fucking hate Mitt Romney. I was memeing it up during that election. What about John McCain? Even uh, I wouldn't know. Which one is worse? You can tell me in the comments. Who do you hate more? John McCain, the ultimate warmonger, or Mitt Romney, the used car salesman and backstabber? 
I don't know. McCain was a little bit more honest and upfront about his views, in all honesty. Uh, he was very honest about the fact that he wanted to start a World War III. Mitt Romney is much more sly about things, and so you don't necessarily even know what he thinks about anything in particular. So it's harder to judge him, but you can judge the fact that it's harder to judge him. It's a weird, it's, it's Inception Romney, basically. And the GOP really screwed the pooch with this one, though. They had to have known that Trump wouldn't sign it. I don't think that they expected several other candidates to flake out over the issue. Again, Christie, there are a couple of others that aren't signing the pledge. Ramaswamy has, DeSantis has, Scott has. Haley did, but she modified it. Christie will sign it, but he's not going to abide by it. Trump's probably not going to sign it. He's the front runner by 40 points at this point, and without him on the debate stage, you really run the risk. The GOP runs the risk right now of looking as a collective. So all the other candidates, all the unipartyists, every TDS suffer combined, the entire party structure looking weaker than literally one man. They run that grave risk. If Donald Trump does come out, and I hope he does, I know that it's like a one in a hundred chance this happens. I'm going to keep talking about this because it'd be so epic if it does. If in a couple of weeks when this debate is being held, Donald Trump makes one tweet, that's all he has to do. It will set the internet ablaze, it'll break the internet, it'll overshadow the entire debate, and all of a sudden, the next day, when people wake up who didn't watch the debate, they, they nodded off early, they had an early shift, they're checking CNN, Fox, NBC, literally anything, and the front page news will be Trump has returned to Twitter. It won't be, here's the GOP debate rundown. We think that Mike Pence did a good job. We think Chris Christie could have performed a bit better. Something like this, something dry and boring. Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares. They'd be talking about Donald. That's all he has to do. Also, he makes millions of dollars in additional funding by making a tweet. It doesn't matter what the tweet's about. It should be a tweet of him coming down the escalator. Just that image. That iconic image from 2016. And then a brief screed. He said, we're back, baby. Or something like that. That's all he has to do. He will overshadow literally all other news for a 24-hour cycle right after the first GOP debate. That's all he has to do. I beg him to do so. Again, if any Donald Trump staffer or somebody close to Roger Stone, fucking Bannon, someone three steps removed from Trump uh, uh, sees this, encourage, do whatever you can to make that happen. It would be legend. Oh, you'd get the energy of 2016 back and then some. The GOP, meanwhile, fuck the GOP. What do they conserve? Conservatives haven't conserved much. Trump is the only one that came along pragmatically and did anything meaningful. You've, you've actually got an attempt. Uh, what, did, uh, what did Bush do? There was no attempt made. Just wars on credit. And a bunch of scandals and shit like that. The GOP, did they stand in the way of Obama's crap with Solyndra, etc.? The AP spying scandal? They didn't even manage to impeach the dude. They had the ability to. They should have impeached Barack Obama. He did plenty of impeachable things. Fast and Furious, the IRS scandal, AP spying, Michael Hastings assassination. Uh, they didn't even look into half of these things. Well, what are they, what are they doing to uh, forestall what Biden does? Uh, you know, the, the Romney and Cornyn and a few of the others stabbed the U.S. in the back on, uh, on uh, Biden's expansive gun control horseshit, uh, despite Bruin. So what's the point supporting them? I support Trump. And when Trump's out, so he's not going to run again. This is our last chance to, to nominate and elect Donald Trump. Get him Grover Cleveland mode, really shock the system. It would be a huge shock to the Uniparty. Uh, regardless of what he does during his presidency, the mere fact that he's there and maybe under criminal probe at the time would, would be basically a fuck you to the entire U.S. establishment. I'd like to see that. And I'd like to see what he can accomplish. But even if they stand in his way nine, nine times out of ten, <clears throat> I think he'll still be, I mean, he'd still be better than Biden. Be better than an Obama or a Bush or something like that. We have to give him the chance, though. We have to pull a little bit of weight, too. I encourage people to go knock on doors. Don't get demoralized. Don't get blackpilled. Don't swallow the horseshit, he can't win bullshit line. Look at the polling. It's better than 2020 or 2016. He won at least one of those races, depending on your opinion on 2020. I think he can pull it off. Shenanigans, chicanery, indictment gate, etc. aside, I think he can actually pull it off. It would be the most amazing redemption arc, the most amazingly American-esque story, oddly enough. This man was strong and brave and bold and, and did it his own way. Then he fell down, but then he got back up. Isn't that kind of the story of the United States? It's almost like a War of 1812 sort of feeling towards it. That's about all. Peace out.